Hello guys, Retroid here, and today we're playing a, a different type of game today. And uh, some of you might be familiar with this game, but it's actually DEFCON. At uh, DEFCON, if you're wondering what it is, it's like a... Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's basically, it's like a um, war game, basically. It's like a war game type of... It's a war game simulator. But it's not a traditional one, it's a nuclear war simulator, basically. So basically, like, it's... It's like a simulation of a nuclear war, and what would happen. And it, it's pretty interesting. It's cool, but also, to, I'll say, time is kind of terrifying. Cause like, I was like, you guys who haven't seen it, you will see in, in this video of how terrifying, like, how, like, how it depicts nuclear war so accurately. I mean, not ac It's just a simulation. Nuclear war might turn out differently, and if it actually happens, which I hope it never does, because nuclear war happens, everybody dies. I mean, look, that's look at the title. Everybody dies. Literally, underneath the title of the game, it says everybody dies because in a nuclear war, everybody will die. Nobody can win a nuclear war. That's the thing about this game. Nobody wins a nuclear war. Well, from that, it's a really cool game. I, I like it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I like simulations. Okay, yeah, I leave this game? Yeah. Uh, so, um, for this instance, I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna play with AI. Um. Let's see, we're good. I think it's good. Uh, let's leave a default. So I'll show you guys what it is. It's it's like a. So this is it. So I am obviously America. So we could uh, let's add some radio stations. Alaska's covered a whole damn continental North America continent. All right, so radio station. I silos so I deploy them here. So you deploy your silos, you deploy everything. See, um, it says DEFCON. Basically, it's like um, the DEFCON. It goes down. The timer goes down. And once it reaches DEFCON one, it means total nuclear annihilation. Basically, it's it's a really um, it's a I don't know if it's accurate, but it's a really sort of accurate of what would happen in a nuclear war. It's the most accurate simulator of what would happen in a nuclear war if it ever did. So let's deploy another air base over here, maybe one in uh, Alaska. So we got air bases now, our fleets. Our fleets, uh, two battleships and two submarines and one carrier and one another submarine. And that will be the Pacific Fleet. And then we should deploy more sub three submarines and two battleships and a carrier. They shall be deployed with fuck. It's already DEFCON 4, see? Alright, we gotta go fast, we gotta go fast, we gotta deploy them fast. You must place all your- Oh, shit! Alright, um... Fuck. Uh... Two carriers. We, we can do that. Uh... That over there. Um... Two battleships. Oh, fuck! We didn't compensate correctly. Fuck. See, uh... Now they're not gonna have any cover. Alright, it's just... Three battleships, three carriers. And it'll be deployed in Atlantic. Holy shit, oh god. Um, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it will be deployed over here and... So now let's deploy. Now let's, um... Obviously, let's go over here. Or maybe not. Let's go... Alright, um... Yeah, over there. Um, this, we will go. No, yeah, we're not attacking anybody yet. Oh, we can attack, because it's about to be DEFCON 3. Right? Yes. Alright, come on. Attack. Yeah, attack. Fuck. Holy crap, my fucking fleets are dying. Shit. Right. This takes a lot of focus. Cause like, they in a nuclear war, nobody wins. Oh shit! The fucking oh fuck 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 fuck. Oh shit! Hey, don't not.
Come on. No. Retreat. What the fuck? Oh god, they're already fucking. Oh shit, that's not good. Alright, problem, problem, problem. I have a lot of problems. Are we good? No, we're not good. We ain't. We're not good. Uh oh, Defcon two. All right, so that's going good. Um, yeah, my fleet over here is getting fucked. That's that's always good. I like when my fleets get fucked. Like, quite literally. I should have put less players. Bomber launch, boy. No, not bomber launch. Fuck. Fire launch. Attack. It's about to be DEFCON 1 shit. We're not even good. We're not. Go over there, retreat. We gotta retreat. It's getting fucked. Alright. Attack these. Attack them. Attack, 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 attack. Destroy the fucking fleet. These, what are you doing? God damn it, you retards. Don't go over there. Oh, fuck my fucking. Oh, God. Attack them. Don't let them fucking nuke our cities. Oh, God. They're launching bombers already? Back and gives you the feel of how the war is getting fucked. Like World War Three is happening. See DEFCON one. Uh -oh. Here it is, the nukes. They play in this mode. ICBM. I realize I have BMs. Fuck. Yeah, DEFCON 1, you can launch nukes, right? Alright, so. I should have been launching nukes this early, but you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna do it. to basically just try to um, win and you have to attack the enemy first that's how you win this game you have to attack first or else you won't win just like that that's how it works in this game oh fuck they're launching In this game, whenever you launch these nukes, like it, you feel guilt. I mean, you don't. It's not real, but the thing is that simulation it makes you feel guilty, kind of like it's terrible. Uh, nuclear war is terrible. Uh, nuclear war. It's just the uh, thought of it ever happening is just terrifying because everybody will die. For, where, where's one going? Go here. They're launching. The nukes are launching. Damn, 
Yeah, the music is ter is terrifying. I mean, just the feel of that happening. Don't I have a? Yeah, I have a new air base. All right, let's um attack that fighter and let's attack that fighter and let's uh attack that. No, that's my fighter. Never mind. Okay, so shit. But oh my god. Holy crap, this is a cuz it's a clusterfuck. Let's see, active sonar. Bomber launch. Crap. Okay. Everything's not air nothing's going good for me in this game. It's really depressing, I'll give you that. It's planes. Well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Fuck, I'm. Change this damn unit, dude. I have no fighters. Fuck. Uh... Oh, God. Don't worry, launch nukes. Attack them. Don't, don't let them get through. San Antonio. Oh, this is so painful to watch. Oh no, it's too late. Millions dead within seconds. That's too. My God. Um, the you know, if nuclear war ever happens. I don't know how to prepare, I mean, you guys can leave it in the comments, I mean, I don't know if you guys comment, but just give me what would you do in a nuclear war, like, what would you be way to, holy crap, never mind, they're already nuking me. Fighters! Oh no, this is bad. All right, then I see how it is.
Houston, not again, Houston. Houston hit 2.6 million dead. Ouch. Oh, I, we hit London. Holy crap, man. Who the hell is launching all these nukes? Is it the god? Oh, the ship's all covered here, right? God damn it. I bet they are. Attack those damn ships. Attack this goddamn bomber. Nuclear annihilation. Oh, there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. The sense of hope in this. Oh, God. No, not New York. Oh. God damn it, we didn't plan this well because my whole fleet got obliterated in the Atlantic. God damn it. Fuck. It's a feeling of failure. You know what then? Find him. You know what? I'm. I'm. Might as fine. South America, you pay for your crimes. For killing our Americans, you will all pay. Uh, new, this city, Nucleba, everything. Retaliation of its finest. That's how, that's how war works, retaliation. It's that simple. Jump controlling got fucked. I'm so bad at this game. Attack them. Protect the country that's not a wasteland. Pretty much, like, in nuclear war, every, everything's dead, so there's really no point of fighting anymore, you know? It will be the point of fighting. I, I really wouldn't know. Coming for you, Europe. No, man, this game is actually fucked up. Uh, it's not making joke of it because every time it's like millions of people are dying. And I, I get it with the European. The, the European are gonna. At least I stopped them, you know?
Yep, there, there it goes. So there goes Europe. suburbs I would you know, obviously take cover in my house um, obviously go if I had a basement go in the basement if not I would probably take cover behind a very structural wall of course most houses nowadays are fucking made of cardboard and you burn the cardboard burns and a nuclear bomb it has fire so that wouldn't really work but I wouldn't get any windows I'd probably just lay down and if I survived if so, for some miracle I survived I would um, obviously I wouldn't go anywhere I wouldn't get any food I would just immediately I'd probably immediately um if I had a friend or something, someone I knew who had like a shelter or something, I'd probably go in it. If I didn't, then I would probably... Well, I would actually prepare for the situation. Maybe when I'm an adult or when I'm, I don't know, when I'm living myself, I'd probably... I'm thinking that, you know I mean, it is something to prepare because it could happen any day. It might not happen because I don't think countries are that stupid that they would actually just decide to nuke. Or they decide to like, you know, just potentially kill like, you know, all of humanity like that. I don't think country's not that stupid, but you never know. It might actually be that dumb. So, so if that's the case, I'll probably get a fall shelter beforehand. Go in a fall shelter, get two weeks of food, an extra three weeks of food and water, radio, battery powered radio. And then after that, I'll probably just go out and see how to, what, ha what has happened to it. Because it takes about three weeks for radiation to decay to a safe level. At least to a safe level. Keyword, safe level. If you're wearing a hazmat suit, because radiation eventually is going to kill you. It's either going to give you cancer, because the follow-up from the bombs, it's going to give you cancer or some type of radiation like this in a couple of years, months. So, in the, in the end, in the end story, everyone's going to die. Yeah, that's why, it, yeah. And, uh, yeah, everyone die. I mean, and part of also that, if I do manage to survive and get out uh, and see what's, how does, what has happened to, you know, the world, what has happened after nuclear war, it would be pointless to you be living because everyone you know would be dead. Everyone you ever knew would most probably be dead. If not dead, probably struggling to survive. Probably somewhere stuck in a trench and struggling to survive. Dying of radiation sickness. Which the radiation sickness is terrible, man. I've heard stories from Hiroshima, Chernobyl. Especially the videos of Hiroshima, that's terrifying. Let's just imagine all of that happened to people on the national level in the US. Kills and, and terrifying. So there would be really no point of living anymore if everyone was dead. So I'll probably either just commit suicide in a situation and just wait to die. Because it's been proven that if there was a nuclear war, that um, basically all the ash and all the bombs or whatever the ash that gets, that gets uplifted, it will eventually come down to fallout, but the rest of it will go into atmosphere and potentially block out the sun for who knows how many years. And since it would block out the sun, they, you can't grow crops. And it would become like a nuclear winter. No crops are grown. There's no food. No food. Everybody starves. Because all the animals are dead. Or either they're mutated. Which, that takes years though. Because radiation doesn't just, doesn't just mutate immediately. It takes years for it to mutate. But other than that, there will really be no point of living anymore. Because everyone would be dead. Just saying. And um, honestly, I really 
really don't know if that would if it would be point like because or maybe if there was like a survivor refugee camp that the US government FEMA set up or something if FEMA was still functioning in the situation because you know, after I think after th like if it was a global thermonuclear state like a full one then I think all systems and infrastructure would be damaged and non-functional but if for some miracle FEMA was still operational and military was still operational probably find a refugee camp probably stay there until I die of radiation sickness or cancer or because radiation will give you tumors and all that stuff, good stuff, thyroid cancer especially. That's why, I mean, even if you inject iodine, it's not going to do anything. Iodine, yeah, it prevents, but in the end game, if you get exposed to like, what, like 1,000, like, rahotnet, you're going to die like in a couple months. And the people in Chernobyl, uh, the workers especially, they died within weeks of the accident. Because, you know, the, when it exploded the core, it was about like 10,100, like no, two, like 15,100 per hour <laughs> the core when it exploded in Chernobyl, when the, the nuclear power plant exploded. And basically, that's how it works. Like, I think like one Wahanen is like 10 x rays. So you multiply 10, 10 by 15,000. Multiply 10 by 15,000, that's like what? Almost 200,000 x rays? Not kidding, like 10 million x rays? And just think about 10 million x rays going through your body at once. Like every second, like your body's not gonna withstand that. In a nuclear war, I mean, in a nuclear war, the same thing. I mean, it won't be as as tough. I mean, it won't be as much because it's you know the fallout would, would decay, the the radiation would decay fast. But you eventually die of a horrible death. I mean, radiation sickness is a horrible death because you get crippling diarrhea, you vomit blood, your hair falls out, your skin starts blistering. Your whole body starts decomposing on a cellular level. Your DNA gets mutated genetically. And this... You just die. A horrible death. And that's what happened. That's the reality of nuclear war and I hope it never happens. But if it ever does... Well... It sucks for humanity. Because because everybody will die. Military personnel will die. All the important generals will eventually die in a bunker because... The generals who are in the bunkers, or the, the people in the submarines, they're eventually going to die. Because first of all, we want our supply, we want our fuel. Or even if they come back to, you know, the nation, it's going to be a wasteland. And radiation is going to be all over the place. It's going to be there for thousands of years. Depends on the immensity of the event. But if it's a global three-way nuclear exchange, you bet that, that you're going to die. But, uh, yeah, that's the terrifying with this game. And you can hear in the background, like, people, like, in the background, and as people crying and stuff, gives you the feel of uh, the terrible consequences of a nuclear war. Which, I mean, I hope it never happens, man, but, it, it is, I mean, in past years, especially in the past years, actually, it seems more possible with all this stuff happening with China and Russia, especially with China being more aggressive. United States have a nuclear rhetoric. You know, it's just like, you know, it's not Cold War era, but it's, it's bad. And, uh, honestly, this game, I mean, this game is like a simulation. It's pretty accurate. It gives you a feel of what happened during nuclear war. Oh my god! Oh mother of Jesus! 
Everyone's launching. Oh my god. What happened? Oh my god. Everyone's launching nukes. timer I don't want to wait that long I think I it's pretty pretty fucking obvious I lost anyways guys that, that's for it for the video I've quite a pretty long I hope you guys watch this video please just watch it please anyways um that'll be it for this episode I hope you guys enjoyed the video see you guys next episode retro out